starting off this countdown, we have Six Flags in New Orleans. Six Flags is a huge American park corporation with parks all throughout the US. But sadly, the one in New Orleans has been abandoned. The park opened in 2000 but only lasted a couple of years. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit the park and the property flooded. The whole park was submerged in 7 feet of water for about a month. The exposure to this water damaged a lot of rides, making them unsafe. There wasn't enough funding for all the repairs that they had to do, so the park was closed. Now it's only used as a film set. In fact, the film Deepwater Horizon and Jurassic World have both filmed scenes there. Moving on to number 9, we have the Land of Oz. Located in North Carolina, the Land of Oz was a park centered around the Wizard of Oz. It first opened in 1970 and featured a beautiful yellow brick road and had an emerald city and even had one of the dresses Judy Garland wore in the film. However, the buzz surrounding this place quickly died down. Then in 1975, there was a fire at the park that destroyed the emerald city. And then Judy Garland's dress was stolen. By 1980, the entire park was abandoned. Now you can only visit the park once a year as part of a Halloween attraction. In our 8th spot, we have Jungle Habitat. Located in West Milford, New Jersey, the Jungle Habitat Amusement Park allowed guests to get up close and personal with the animals. You could do this by walking or driving through a specific area. The drive through area was supposed to feel like you were on a safari adventure. This amusement park had 70 different species of animals from all around the world. However, there were constant rumors of animals escaping from the park or illegal poachings happening. This, of course, damaged its reputation. But that's not what caused the park to close. It said that Warner Bros wanted to make the park bigger, but the residents of the area were not too fond of this idea. In 1976, the park shut down and all the animals were rehomed. However, after the park was closed, frozen remains of several animals were found on the premises, making them wonder what went on there behind the scenes. Coming in at number 7, we have River Country. I've talked about this park before in another video, but I feel like it needs to be mentioned again. River Country Park opened in 1976 and was the first water park at Walt Disney World. The park was designed to look like a swimming hole. It had fake mountains with water slides and it was a good idea, except a lot of bad things ended up occurring at the park. In 1980, a boy was killed at the park after getting a bacterial infection from one of the pool's water. The bacteria ended up attacking his brain and nervous system, which then killed him. Then just two years later, another guest passed away at the park. Sadly, this guest drowned after coming off one of the water slides. Then in 1989, another drowning occurred. The park closed its doors in November of 2000. But most of it is still there, and it makes for a good place for urban explorers to check out, especially since it's now considered haunted by the souls of the people who died there. Moving on at number six, we have Bedrock City. Who here grew up watching the Flintstones? Man, that is such a classic cartoon. Back in the 70s, a Flintstones themed amusement park was opened in Williams, Arizona. It had rides such as a giant brontosaurus shaped slide, character statues, and a Flintstones themed diner. It also had a campground if you wanted to stay overnight. But recently, the park changed owners, and well, the new owner had new plans for the park. The park was recently closed just last year, and now this owner plans to make it into a new new attraction called Raptor Ranch. Can't lie, it sounds pretty cool. But for now, the park is abandoned and all that's left is a cutout of Wilma standing near the entrance. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Hobbiton. Hobbiton was an amusement park centering around J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. Now, you think that this park would be a huge success since the books were, but nope. It wasn't. Built in the 1970s, this attraction didn't have any rides or games, but instead it was more of like a nature walk, where you could just walk through scenes from the book. And I think that one of the reasons why this park failed was because people want rides and games, something to, you know, like interact with. 
At this park you would walk through the story of Bilbo Baggings and each set had a voice box that would tell you what was going on in the scene that you were viewing. But it was a failed project and ended up closing in 2009. But if you pass by the area you can still see a sculpture of Gandalf at the door of Bilbo Baggins Hobbit Hole. Coming in at number 4 we have Chippewa Lake Amusement Park. This amusement park was operational for a hundred years before closing down. It opened in 1878 and was the hot spot for family fun. In fact, its ferris wheel was said to be the fastest ferris wheel in America. I don't know if that's really an accomplishment though, like I can just feel the nausea just thinking about it. Sadly, the park closed down in 1978 because of low attendance. The park was left untouched for quite some time. Then in 2008, a fire destroyed many of the structures. The rest of the structures were demolished that same year. But people really need to stop burning down abandoned amusement parks. In our third spot, we have Prehistoric Forest. This amusement park had everything you could ever ask for. They had a water slide, a waterfall, a smoke volcano and dinosaurs. Lots and lots of dinosaurs. Built in 1963, this park was meant to mix fun with education. The park was divided into three areas. First you had a safari train ride that would take you through the woods filled with 70 statues of dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures. Then you had a walking tour led by a guide and you would learn more about the creatures. Lastly, there was another train which took you through the land of the leprechaun. I know, kind of seems weird like what a dinosaurs and leprechauns have in common, but this taught you legends from early Irish settlers of the area. The park even had a fossil digging pit, which is really cool, I would have loved that. And entry back in 1981 was only 275 for an adult and 175 for a kid. Man, I wish that's how cheap Disney's tickets were, because if that was the case, I'd be going like every month. Unfortunately, this park closed in 1999. In our second spot, we have Lincoln Park. And I'm not talking about the band here, or an amusement park based on the band. Lincoln Park was an amusement park located between New Bedford and Fall River in Massachusetts. In 1894, the Union Street Railway Company created Lincoln Park to connect Fall River to New Bedford. Lincoln Park was at the end of the trolley line and was originally created as a picnic park. It had picnic tables, a playground, and some grills to make your own food. Eventually, it transformed into an amusement park. It was originally named Midway Park or Westport Park. Park, but was later changed to Lincoln Park. This park was known for its ride, the Comet, which was a 300 foot long wooden roller coaster. But in 1986, a fatal accident occurred on this roller coaster, which kind of scared a lot of people. And they're like, mm, is it really as safe as you claim it to be? Then in 1987, another accident occurred on another roller coaster. But thankfully, this time no one was injured. But the park was closed in 1987. Then in the 1990s, a series of fires destroyed 90% of the park and the rides. What's with all these parks catching on fire? Like seriously. Smokey the Bear is going to find out. And in our number one spot, we have Lake Shawnee. This is one amusement park that does not have a child friendly past. Apparently, the park was built on the site of the Clay Family Massacre. Basically, members of a family were kidnapped and killed on the land. Whoever thought it was a good spot for an amusement park should have been fired. The park opened in 1926 and was rumored to be haunted. After the death of two park guests, the park park closed in 1966. Now it's said that the ghosts of the park's victims can be seen there at night. In our number 10 spot we have the Pripyat Amusement Park. Ever heard of a town called Pripyat? Well, I'd be surprised to hear that you haven't, as this is a very known town around the world as a very horrible disaster once occurred there. I am speaking, of course, of the Chernobyl plant explosion that took place in 1986. Well, just before the explosion, Pripyat was planning on opening up an amusement park, the Pripyat Amusement Park. And the opening was scheduled for five days after the day that the explosion happened. Well, as you can 
imagine the explosion was so bad that the amusement park plans were turned upside down. The park owners opened the park for one day to try to distract everyone from the horrible disaster, but as you can imagine, as everyone fled, the park closed and never reopened. The Ferris wheel is still standing there today and there are dark tours that go through the park and the abandoned town. In our number 9 spot we have Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. Lake Shawnee Amusement Park was located in West Virginia and it was open from 1926 till 1966. This park ended up closing because it began to hold a horrible reputation as a few killings happened on its grounds. One accidental, one seemingly not, and apparently others that haven't been confirmed but nonetheless, this began to make visitors uncomfortable and so the park shut down. People believe it to be haunted by the ghosts of the young ones that passed away there, but also people believe that the land was cursed from the start as there was a quarrel between a First Nation tribe and a European settler once in this area. It had a brutal history from 1783 where the Shawnee Native American tribe ended up killing the offspring of the first man that made a home in their area named Mitchell Clay. But there is so much more to the story as apparently the park was built on a Native American burial ground and many young ones were buried there. People believe these ghosts could be haunting the park too, but in any case, no one can deny that the park, even today, feels haunted. In our number 8 spot we have Joyland Amusement Park. Located in Kansas, the Joyland Amusement Park was one of the biggest when it opened in 1949. 57 acres in fact. It was doing very well until a lot of ride related deaths started occurring. Then there was a massive scandal where an employee was killed by some people visiting the park and that caused a lot of unwanted press. Then an employee was injured by a roller coaster and finally someone fell off of a ferris wheel in 2004. As you can imagine, all of these incidents led to lawsuits and eventually financial ruin for the park where they then had to shut down. Apparently the park was purchased in 2018 with plans to turn it into a concert venue slash wedding venue, but man, I hope they have had like 10 priests bless this ground first before they open it. In our number 7 spot we have Dreamland Park. The Dreamland Park was located in Pennsylvania and it opened in 1939. When this park opened, it didn't have too many attractions as you would imagine a typical amusement park to have. The park only had a roller rink, a band theater, a few rides, and a small car race track. And some picnic areas. In August of 1969 though, two people by the name of Marilyn Sheckler and Glenn Eckert were killed on the premise and that is where the park began to have a reputation for being associated with gangs, gambling and dark dealings. Another killing took place on the grounds in the 90s and that is what led to the published non-fiction novel about the park. In our number 6 spot we have the Magic Harbor Park. Here is another abandoned park with a dark history. Magic Harbor, located near Myrtle Beach, opened in 1954. In 1976, one of the owners and his son were fatally injured by an employee of the park which resulted in them both passing away. After this horrible incident, the wife of the park owner did not want to continue running the park so it went into foreclosure and the bank took over. It was eventually bought out again but in 1984, another tragedy happened where a young girl passed away after falling off a ride and the park was sued for $12 million. With its poor reputation and now horrible financial issues, the park eventually closed. In our number 5 spot we have Holy Land USA. This is an old Christian theme park as you may have deduced from the title. Holy Land. It opened in 1960 and apparently the theme park contained replicas of famous scenes from the Bible such as the Garden of Eden, the Last Supper, etc. A large cross was placed on a hill and a big sign with its name on it that is apparently hard to miss if you're driving along Interstate 84 in Waterbury, Connecticut. Apparently the park was a hit and a Baptist owned it. Makes sense. And he originally closed the park in the 80s to work on expanding it, but then he passed away. Nuns of the area were maintaining the grounds, but over the years it got worse and worse due to vandalism and an unfortunate killing that took place under the cross. In our number four spot, we have Brandywine Springs. The Brandywine Springs Amusement Park opened in 1886 in Williamton, Delaware, and it was a good example of what you can imagine as good, clean fun. The park had a wooden 
wooden roller coaster, a train, restaurants, a castle, a castle house, and much more. The park was a hot spot until a tragedy occurred when an employee and another male was fatally injured, and this certainly changed the park for good. The park closed in 1923, around the time that cars became more available to the average person, which made it easier for people to travel and then they would find new adventures elsewhere and not spend their time slash money at the park. Apparently the park is in ruins at the moment, but there are plans to put up signs and photographs of where the major attractions once stood so that people that walk through it can learn a little about its history. Well that's fun. Maybe you're not prohibited from visiting this one. In our number 3 spot we have Kajonuma Leisure Land. Once a very popular amusement park in Japan, eventually it turned into something quite dark. It had all of the fun amusement park rides and was beloved by many, despite its ghost stories. Unlike many of the other parks here, the park only closed in 2000 due to a drop in visitors, which is believed to be the cause of Japan's declining birth rate and the economic crisis. However, there is a strange urban legend about the park that is still told today that has urban explorers wanting to visit the land. Apparently there is a lake by the park that is known to have a large snake population and as the legend goes, a pregnant woman who lived near there gave birth to a serpent baby who escaped into the water and every night the woman would hear the baby cry. It drove her mad and she ended up taking her own life in the lake and it was her ghost that people believed haunted the park. Dark. People have reported hearing her and her serpent babies cries. In our number 2 spot we have Rocky Point Amusement Park. Rocky Point Amusement Park located in Warwick, Rhode Island opened in 1847 and didn't close till 1995. It had a long history of over 150 years of being active and it attracted a lot of very famous guests who performed there over the years. Some of the later guests you would know include Pat Benatar, the Ramones, and a personal fave of mine, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. It only had one killing on site ever recorded and it was in 1893 when a clinically insane man fatally injured his daughter. The park was so popular that eventually people forgot about the incident. This is one park that would honestly just be sad to visit because it seems like it was so cool. I don't wish sadness for you, so don't go and visit it. In our number one spot we have Gulliver's Kingdom. Gulliver's Kingdom, an amusement park in Japan that opened in 1997 near the base of Mount Fuji, is probably the creepiest park I have ever Ever seen. I mean, the park was based off of a book called Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, and so I bet the park wouldn't feel as creepy for people that have read the book. The park famously had a giant lying on its back, a picture that we can assume is taken from the book. The park existed for only about 10 years before it closed due to the park just not resonating with the people as the owners thought it would. Honestly, an idea like this feels too big for the 90s. People are way more open now creatively, so I bet it would be a hit these days. Instagram was invented a little too late. At this point, the park has been demolished, so it's no longer a site for urban explorers, but the pictures of this very chilling park will live on in our brains forever. Starting us off at number 10 is Lake Buena Vista Airport. If there is one thing that Disney does best, it's branding their empire. And once upon a time, an airport, of all things, was a part of the Disney dynasty. You see, when Walt was first trying to create Epcot, the community, not the theme park, he wanted a regional airport with four runways. This vision did not quite come to fruition, but what we did get was the 1971 Buena Vista Airport. This boutique airport, if you will, was only used by two airlines and was meant for Disney guests and employees, and the biggest feature it became known for was that When You Wish Upon a Star played after landing thanks to small grooves in the runway. However, cute fact aside, despite Walt's grand plans, the dream began to die in the 1980s with the construction of the monorail. The airport, now surrounded on either side, became dangerous to use, and so eventually no more flights were allowed in or out. Nowadays, the abandoned airport is mostly used for storage and parking rather than an attraction for the public, but it's said that Walt's abandoned plane is hidden somewhere on the lot. And who knows, maybe his ghost is still in there. Next up at number 9, the Wonders of Life Pavilion. 
don't know about you, but when I think about Disney, I don't usually jump to health education. Well, as it turns out, the plan for the original Epcot included a pavilion that was to be dedicated to life and health, which eventually made its debut in 1989. The main attraction of this pavilion was called Body Wars, which was a ride that aimed to simulate what it felt like to travel through the human bloodstream, which had I had the chance, I would for sure have wanted to get on to live out my magic school bus dreams. However, despite running for nearly 18 years, the Wonders of Life Pavilion closed without any explanation in January 2007. At the time of its closure, there were of course tons of rumors, however the true reason has never been verified. It was just boarded up and closed off. which is definitely a bit suspicious, but could there be something they are hiding from the public that's locked away? I guess we'll never know. Next up at number 8, Pirates of the Caribbean. As the legend goes, during the construction for the Florida version of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, a welder named George was killed in an accident. Now, the exact accident that happened to George does vary depending on who you ask. Some say he was crushed by a falling beam, while others say that he fell from the burning city portion of the ride and died as a result. But no matter how he died, everyone can agree on one thing. that. He he remains haunting the ride and terrorizing anyone who dares disrespect him. It said George will stop the ride if he hears you say that you don't believe he's real. And superstitious cast members will greet George when they arrive and say goodbye when they leave to try and stay on his good side. So with that being said, while it's not technically prohibited, it's not exactly somewhere you want to mess with. So if you do decide to take your chances, make sure you don't piss off George. You never know what might happen. Next up at number 7, Haunted Mansion. This next one is a story from a visitor at Disney World in Florida while riding the Haunted Mansion who claims they witnessed a ghost and allegedly have the photo to prove it. Quote, as you'll see in the photo, it appears as though a young boy is peeking his head out of the doom buggy and looking directly at me. Not only was he not there when I took the pic, there wasn't a boy of this age within 20 people in front of me in line. And as you can see, he's only a few doom buggies in front of me. Not only that, What's he doing looking at me? There is no flash and no visible light coming from me. It's all infrared and invisible to the naked eye. So could it be that the haunted mansion is in fact haunted by real ghosts? Just tread carefully if you try to find out for yourself. You never know what they could want from you. Next up at number 6, Walt's Apartment. Depending on how much of a Disney fan you are, you may or may not be familiar with a certain apartment that's located above the firehouse on Main Street at Disneyland. The reason for this apartment was initially nothing terribly exciting, but simply because Mr. Disney himself wanted a place to stay that was on the property to make those late nights and early mornings a little easier. Now, to be fair, Walt's apartment isn't really prohibited anymore. You can go see it if you like, but the question is, should you? Well, nowadays a light is always left on in the front window. According to the legend, this wasn't always the case. It's said that one day a cast member looking after the apartment tried to turn the light off before leaving. However, after leaving the building, she looked up only to notice that the light was still on upstairs. Confused, but assuming she must have forgotten, she went back up to turn it off and came back downstairs. But once again, it was on. So she went up again, unplugged the lamp, only to find it once again still somehow back on by the time she came downstairs. The final time she went up, she heard an angry voice saying, quote, I'm still here. And she was so frightened, she ran away and never returned back to work. Who could that voice have belonged to? No one knows for sure, but the light remains on so as to never anger it again. Coming in at number 5, Dolly's Dip. In 1984, Regina Young, or Dolly as she liked to go by, was tragically killed while riding the Matterhorn. It seems there was a malfunction in Dolly's seatbelt resulting in her falling out of the bobsled and being struck by an oncoming sled. The family eventually settled with the park and the park simultaneously changed the kinds of seatbelts used for that attraction. However, the park says that the two events are 
unrelated. Now, of course, the Matterhorn remains a public ride, so you're free to take your chances on it. But be warned, it's said that the ghost of Dolly haunts the ride, specifically at the location she was killed. Referred to as Dolly's Dip, visitors and employees alike say they have been haunted by her presence while inside. Some say they can feel her watching them, while others claim to have seen a full bodied apparition. But unless you're looking for a little paranormal action on your next Disney trip, then I would suggest lining up for a different ride. Coming in at number four, Nara Dreamland. Located in Japan, Nara Dreamland opened its doors to the public back in 1961. Now, from the get go, the plan for this park was to be a part of the Disney franchise. In fact, Kunizo Matsuo, president of the Matsuo Entertainment Company, apparently met with Walt Disney to discuss the attraction with the plan of it being an official Disney park in mind. However, allegedly, after disagreements over the licensing fees for using the Disney characters, there was a huge falling out and Nara Dreamland was officially not an affiliated park. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, what the hell is this doing on a Disney list? Well, despite its lack of official Disney representation, it sure resembles a Disney park if I've ever seen one. Or rather, it did prior to its 2006 closure. Attractions like a large Matterhorn Mountain, Castle, and even a monorail found, and for many years it remained a ghost town, overgrown with nature and filled with an eerie presence. This of course caught the attention of Disney and horror fans alike for a while, but you had to be incredibly careful, as it was said visitors could be fined and arrested for trespassing into the abandoned property. However, as of 2017, the former theme park was demolished. But make no mistake, it's still not somewhere you should go poking around. While it was abandoned, some that snuck in complained of feeling like they were being watched or haunted by an angry entity, and it's believed that those same ghosts still haunt the grounds where it used to stand. Coming in at number three, Nighttime Trespassers. In 1966, 19 year old Thomas Guy Cleveland tried to sneak into Anaheim's Disneyland by scaling the park's outer fence and climbing along the monorail track. Now, why he was trying to sneak in after hours, we don't really know. But nonetheless, his devious plan all came to a halt when a nearby security guard noticed him. At first, he approached to get him to leave, but then he noticed a monorail was making its way along the tracks and so he began yelling at Cleveland to get out of the way. At this point, Cleveland jumped and landed on a fiberglass canopy beneath the track to try and clear it. But unfortunately, the canopy did not keep him safe. From there, the 25 km an hour monorail struck Cleveland and dragged his body for 40 feet down the track. By the time the monorail had made a complete stop, his body had been torn to pieces. So whatever you do, for the love of God, don't don't try to scale the wall and sneak in at night. It might be the last night you ever have. Coming in at number two, Discovery Island. Originally called Treasure Island, after the 1950 film of the same name, this Disney park opened to the public in 1974 as a premier tourist destination for Disney fans of all ages. Accessible only by resort boat or Disney cruise lines, the original park revolved around the theme of shipwrecks, secret caves, and buried treasure. However, in April 1976, Disney decided to rebrand to the new Discovery Discovery Island. This rebranding waved goodbye to pirate boats and treasure and instead welcomed rich flora and fauna hoping to invite a more relaxing atmosphere all while simultaneously showcasing and protecting Florida's local wildlife. Which to be fair, it did for a while. Discovery Island was accredited by the Association of Zoological Parks and Aquariums and at its peak housed over 500 endangered species. However, much to the public's surprise, Discovery Island Island was abandoned in 1999. The animals were relocated to a new park, Animal Kingdom, and the island park has remained a ghost town ever since. Now, while it's sort of unclear as to why it shut down, some reasons include wild roaming alligators, along with deadly bacteria found in the park's waters. And while all of that might sound intriguing, I promise you, you do not want to try and visit this one. Walt Disney World has banned all outings to the park. In fact, you're not allowed to get within 50 feet of its shoreline, and legal action can be taken if you're found trespassing. And that's not just a threat, people have 
actually been banned from all Disney parks for life for attempting to visit. So yeah, if I were you, I would steer clear of this one. And last up in our number one spot, River Country. After opening as the first water park at the Walt Disney World Resort in 1976, River Country was a popular destination for many years. And out of all of the places on this list, this one definitely has the wildest backstory. Controversy around the water park started to bubble up back in 1980, when a boy tragically died there due to an amoeba that was found in the water. The amoeba in question managed to kill him by attacking his brain and nervous system. However, Disney was absolved of the blame due to the fact that that specific amoeba could have bred in any fresh water. But the story's not done yet. Fast forward two years to 1982 and another boy died at River Country, this time from drowning on the Whoopenhaller slide. This time Disney was sued by the family of the boy who claimed that there was no proper warning about how deep the water was. And a lifeguard testified, admitting that they had to routinely save dozens of people from that slide on a daily basis. Basis. Even so, the park remained open. Then in 1989, another boy drowned there. However, it wasn't until the events in September of 2001 went down that Disney was forced to close the park due to the nationwide tourism cut. From that day forward, the doors have remained shut and the park has been closed off to the public. Though some believe that those who have lost their lives still roam around haunting the grounds. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have socks. This story comes from a Redditor and it definitely isn't the most terrifying thing ever, but there's just something super strange and kind of intriguing about it, so I obviously had to tell you guys about it since we're besties. Basically, this Redditor who goes by the username Park in the Nest explained that one day after the amusement park, they worked at had closed for the night, they found a backpack. They were clearly feeling brave because they opened the bag. I personally would have left it there and called the bomb squad or something, but hey, some might call me an overreactor. Anyway, so this person opens up this bag and just finds like a hundred black socks. That's it. Again, I know it's not scary, you don't have to tell me that, but I feel like I have at least 20 questions for this person who the backpack belongs to. Why? Why at an amusement park? I don't know anymore. Number nine, a lost phone. This is why you never make your phone wallpaper personal. Okay, take notes, people. This one comes from a user named Kid Cougar, which is a great name. They had just finished working at Disneyland for almost five years, and during their time there, they of course saw some wild things turn up and lost and found, like a singular Yeezy shoe keys to a Ferrari, or a wallet with $700 cash stuffed in it. Bonus points for the fact that they counted the cash, keeping it real, nice. One of the weirdest things they found though, and I'll say this is pretty haunting, was an iPhone with a nude as the wallpaper, a nude personal photo right there on the front. Could you imagine what kind of freak must you be to have this on your phone? Imagine someone checking to see what battery you're at, and you're like, oh yeah, you're at 87%. Also, nice <laughs> Better keep that brightness real low, Frank. In our number eight spot today, we have Bob Hope. Okay, me again with another one that's not terrifying, but it is absolutely hilarious. If you don't know who Bob Hope is, he was a British American stand-up comedian, vaudevillian actor, singer, and dancer, and considering he lived to be 100 years old, his career ended up spanning over 80 years, which is just incredible. So how does this relate to today's video? Well, someone explained that one year when they worked at an amusement park, they kept finding little hidden pictures of Bob everywhere, in an ice bucket on the rides, in cash registers, in the gardens, literally everywhere you can think of, these little Bob Hope pictures popped up. There's something so funny about it to me, like for a whole summer someone just dedicated their life to sneaking around hiding these little Bob Hope photos. I know I'm supposed to be talking about terrifying stuff today and I'm not doing that, so to add a little spooky element for ya, imagine if this person was finding photos of themselves instead of Bob Hope. Yeah, call the police. Number seven, hair ties. There are thousands of hair ties at one end of the Animal Kingdom roller coaster Expedition Everest. I imagine because someone started some stupid tradition and people think doing dumb shit is a legacy. That's from an employee named Eclectic Said, and I have no idea why he's so mad about this. This guy is so rattled about hair ties for literally no reason. Well, I kinda get it, let's talk. He was probably on the ride at one point, he had a great time, and then come the end of this journey, he sees this lovely tradition where riders then flick their hair ties in a friend 
Lindsay of fun, and this guy is just salty he couldn't participate. Maybe he's bald, who knows? But to be fair, it does look like crap now. I just did a video on global warming and how humans are the worst, and Expedition Everest sure isn't helping this image. I mean, it literally looks like melting ice and we're tossing garbage onto it. It looks bad. Also, side note, keep your greasy summer day split ends to yourself. Nobody behind you on a roller coaster needs that in their face at any point. Thanks. In our number six spot today, we have skin. Okay guys, I'm here with one that's actually terrifying now. I knew we could make it. This story comes from a Redditor first suite in E flat, and honestly, I'm just gonna read you what they wrote because I could not sum it up better than they did. They said, quote, I found a plastic baggie with cat skin in it. It was like one of those bear skin rugs. It was even pretty clean looking. Definitely not freshly skinned. I don't know how I got there, why it was there. I was pretty freaked out when I found it thought it was a dead animal. Well, first tweet in E flat, you absolutely do not have to explain to us why you were freaked out by that find. We understand. I have two questions about this one. Firstly, why does anyone have that at all? But secondly, why would you have that at a theme park? Imagine packing your bag like sunscreen, check. Water bottle, check. Cat skin, Oh, dad, you forgot the cat skin again? We gotta turn this car around. Number five, an engagement ring. Ah, yes, no finer place to propose to the love of your life than on the relaxing sp space mountain. Nice, must be loud. This next one comes from a user named I've Got Three Division, and they say that they worked at Space Mountain for 10 years at Walt Disney World. And over time, they also found some pretty wild belongings. For example, pants. Just a pair of pants, which brings up so many more questions in my head. They also found maracas, okay, a corn cob pipe, beer cans, and a Santa hat. And also a prosthetic leg. Gotta keep those arms and legs in the vehicle at all times, guy. Read the sign. Perhaps one of the most scariest items recovered was an engagement ring. Did they say yes? Did they ask mid-ride? If so, I need the footage of this. That's probably bad for your back or neck, turning and proposing mid-roller coaster. Also, your grip better be A1. Gorilla glue that thing to the box, then you're good. You can go upside down and be like, she said no, but it's fine. In our number four spot today, we have bones. This find came from an abandoned theme park, and honestly, we can be grateful for that, because if it didn't, I'd have a lot more questions to ask. A Reddit user called my mom Mom is a Karen123 posted a photo in a bone identification thread. The photo was of, well, bones, and the question they posed was, quote, what spine is this found it in an abandoned theme park? There's something so hilarious about that to me, but it's also so creepy. They posted three separate photos of this tiny skeleton, which they so desperately needed to identify. Like I said before, I'm just glad this was found in an abandoned theme park and not an in-use one, because I would have had so many questions as to how an entire animal could have decomposed without anyone noticing until it was a skeleton. Also, in case you were wondering, the person took the skeleton to a museum for bone identification. I didn't know museums did that, but either way, it was a squirrel. Number three, a not so chill cooler. Remember when a bunch of archeologists found a sarcophagus in Egypt and then they decided it would be a good idea to open it just because? Well, they found three skeletons inside and the smell was beyond horrible. Curiosity kills the cat and for this amusement park employee, it definitely ruined their entire week. This Reddit user shared their story about closing up one night after guests had left the park. They were cleaning the picnic shelter and came across a cooler. Now normally, this is not a bizarre find. Families roll through here often. People need a place to keep things fresh. But when he opened it, he didn't see anything fresh. That's when the trouble began, in fact. Just like that ancient Egyptian sarcophagus, this cooler did not smell great. It was filled with puke, like a lot of puke. They said a lot a lot, so whatever you think that looks like in your head, there you go, yuck. It was one of the most disgusting things I have ever seen. Yeah, nobody's gonna fight you on that, poor soul. I don't know who I feel bad for more here, the person who made the mess or the person who found it. Either way, this is, this is all bad. Also, I'll take a Coke. Thanks. In our number two spot today, we have a missile. This one comes from another Redditor, of course, because that's where all of the wildest stories tend to come from. Basically, the theme park they were visiting has been abandoned for a decent amount of time, and the land it sits on is privately owned. There are a ton of no trespassing signs around, but this Redditor, who grew up close to the abandoned park and drove by it every day, decided that they had enough of guessing what may be in there, and one day decided to actually go and check it out. They said that the park contained a lot of weird stuff, like 
like quote old rusted out cars that hadn't moved in years with fresh brand new number plates on them, a bamboo fencing inside these wooden teepees that looked like it was freshly installed despite these teepees sitting dormant for decades. But the weirdest thing that they said that they found was this weird missile looking thing. When someone brought up the fact that perhaps it was once a decoration for a ride, the OP replied that this theme park was basically all like children's fairy tales and folklore and that sort of a thing, so no real reason for whatever this is, real or not, to be there. The item was found inside of a fenced box that also contained things like bikes for toddlers and washing machines. I don't know, this place sounds weird. And finally, number one, Winnie the Pooh's ear. This next one is just not for the faint of heart, guys. This user named Hiribi shared their experience where they had to shut down operations for an entire day, all to remove Winnie the Pooh's ear. Tragic. Disney is full of silly hats and even sillier headbands with ears on them. It's a great time. All the silly ears you can think of. Mickey, Minnie, Winnie, the Aristocats. It's a great look until one of those ears falls off into a dangerous part of the ride and then everybody's life is at risk. The thing is the size of a Dorito and guests had to leave the line. They had to shut down for an entire day. How dare you, Winnie? This sounds silly, but ride shutdowns are no joke. Time is money at an amusement park and that's why soft drinks are $18. Now it's starting to make sense. Pooh's Honey Hunt at Disneyland Tokyo cost about $120 million to build. That's like 40 funnel cakes. It's not cheap. Starting us off at number 10 is Fire Mountain. In the mid 90s, Fire Mountain was an unbuilt roller coaster that park officials were considering adding to the Adventureland area of the Magic Kingdom. The ride was based on the film Atlantis The Lost Empire and would have taken park goers to an active volcano located between Splash Mountain and Pirates of the Caribbean. The story of the ride was set in 1916. Preston Whitmore is trying to make Atlantis's existence public and starts offering expeditions to visitors. The vehicles they're in are forced to unexpectedly take a detour through the volcano. Mm. But the whole plan was cancelled due to the film doing shockingly bad and underperforming at the box office. The ride was originally designed to be built to compete with Universal Studios Islands of Adventure, but after visiting it and basically realizing that it was a mess and no threat to Walt Disney World, they decided to just cancel the whole construction of this ride. <laughs> when we visited them, they're like, this ain't they're like, oh, <laughs> this is our competition. Yes. <laughs> Never <Okay>. mind. <laughs> <laughs> In our ninth spot, we have The Nightmare Before Christmas. I am disappointed that this project never got finished because I'm a huge fan of The Nightmare Before Christmas and Jack Skellington. It's just a classic movie. Is it a movie to watch during Halloween? Is it a movie to watch during Christmas? The answer is, it's a movie to watch during both of my favorite holidays. Like, that's amazing. But anyways, The Nightmare Before Christmas ride was going to be built beside the evil It's a Small World ride at Disneyland. Seriously, that ride is is cursed or something. It was going to have guests in a flying coffin help Jack save Christmas. And at the end of the ride, it was going to show Jack and Sally hugging in the snow, how cute. But for some reason, the project was scrapped. However, every year from Halloween to Christmas, Disneyland redecorates the Haunted Mansion ride to be Nightmare Before Christmas themed. So, in a way, we get our nightmare fix, but not in the way that they originally intended. At number eight, we have Pop Century Resorts. So the foundation of the resort had two parts to it, the legendary years and the classic years, and those two parts were connected by a bridge called the Generation Gap. Very literal and ironic, I know. But the legendary years would have represented the 1900s all the way to the 40s, and the classic years would have represented the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. The original plan was for the resort to open in 2001, but then due to construction delays, it was pushed back another year. And then 9-11 happened, which plummeted tourism to basically nothing. The opening was then postponed again because there was zero demand for hotel rooms. Construction on the Classic Years side continued until its opening in 2003, but the Legendary Years side hasn't been touched since 2001. In 2006, Disney announced they would restart construction on the abandoned side, but that never happened. LOL. In 2010, it was announced Disney's Art of Animation Resort would be replaced the legendary side, but the original buildings still stand. As for the classic year side, we don't talk about that no more. Making our way down the list to number seven, we have the Food Rocks. Food Rocks was opened in 1994 and featured a musical show with animatronic figures. 
Kind of like the Chuck E. Cheese band, but more classy in a way and less scary. I don't think it can be classy in any way. Well, I don't know. But the Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> band is terrifying with their really evil eyes. The Food Rocks was an animatronic show in the Land Pavilion at Epcot. It opened in 1994 and was all about the importance of eating healthy. The animatronics were different types of food, but with human features. They then would make funny parodies of songs like Every Breath You Take was every bite you take. That's a great song festival, <laughs> just wanted to put that out there. Now, the vaudeville style show was basically meant to teach kids about the four food groups but was eventually shut down in 2004. But according to Modern Mouse Radio, the whole stage was left intact and is just hidden behind the walls. Even the animatronic figures are said to be resting behind the walls so while you're queuing up for that flight simulator ride, just remember those singing food items are right there. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Can you imagine if they just started uh, singing all of a sudden? They're like, every bite you take. <laughs> Dude, I'd get so scared. I'm like, where is, this, like, coming what is this coming from? Are you hearing that? I'm like, where is that? <laughs> so creepy. In our sixth spot, we have the Beastly Kingdom. The original plans for the Animal Kingdom was supposed to incorporate three categories of animals. Real, extinct, and imaginary. So the Beastly Kingdom was supposed to be a section of the Animal Kingdom Park that focused on mythological animals. They had plans to have a quest of the unicorn hedge maze, a boat ride based on Fantasia, and even a massive castle home to a fire-breathing dragon. Like, that sounds awesome. And that castle's dragon was planned to be the largest animatronic creature in the whole park. Now, there is no conclusive reason as to why this idea was abandoned, but every year there is new hope that Disney will follow through with this idea. Coming in at number 5 is Walt Disney's Riverfront Square. Okay, so this project was a huge deal because it was meant to be Disney's second park after the one in California. Now if you weren't aware, Walt Disney grew up in Missouri, so in 1963 he met up with St. Louis's mayor to talk about the plans. It was meant to be a theme park right by the riverfront area which worked out since the area was already undergoing renovations due to a city celebration. The park would have taken up two blocks and its entrance would have been very similar to Disneyland's Main Street one. Attractions like the Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, and the Western Riverboat Ride were all meant to be at this park. Unfortunately, the plans for the park completely fell through in 1965 due to financial and ownership issues. Walt then turned all his focus to the Walt Disney World in Florida, and I mean, it's a good thing he did too. That one's vibing. At number 4 is the People Mover. So this ride was essentially a transport attraction that opened up at Tomorrowland at Disneyland California back in 1967. Park goers would board these small trains that toured around Tomorrowland from above. And as fun as safe as that ride sounds, it really wasn't. A month into the ride being in operation, a 16 year old guy tripped and fell onto the track and the oncoming trains crushed him and dragged his body for a few hundred feet before actually stopping. Can you imagine having a death only one month into the ride? opening. That is not a good track record. And no, that is not the only death the ride caused. Was that a was that a pun in, intended? Yes. This is not a good track. <laughs> that <laughs> was clever. Tis. I like that. <laughs> but seriously, that is terrifying. But that wasn't the reason why the ride was closed. The ride was closed in August of 1995 because the Disney team thought that it was too old school. As a result, it was replaced by the Rocket Rods three years later, which then didn't last too long as well. <laughs> But not to fear, a lot of the pieces of the train from the original ride are still used in other parts around the resort. And the track is still in Tomorrowland, just unused. In 2010, Disney announced that the ride was coming back. But it's been 10 years and nothing has happened. So let's just hope that they get that whole death by ride thing figured out. Yeah. We don't need any more of those. 10 years, I don't think the comeback's happening. No, <laughs> it's definitely nope. not. <laughs> coming in at number three, we have Cranium Command. The Wonder of the Life Pavilion had a short-lived life. It opened in October of 1989 and closed in 2007. The pavilion was designed to be educational, yet fun. It focused all about the human body. Now, one of the rides at this attraction was called Cranium Command. For this ride, guests were sent on a mission into the human brain of a 12-year-old boy. Yeah, not creepy at all. You were then called a Cranium Commando, and alongside Buzzy, a tiny soldier, you would help complete this mission. Not gonna lie, I've seen footage from this ride, and it looks really creepy. So you're inside a theater that is designed to look like you're inside this boy's head. So you're inside his head, 
looking out of his eyes, seeing what he is seeing. Then it's kind of like a simulator ride where you just watch the story unfold while your chair vibrates and moves to whatever is happening. But unfortunately, this ride was abandoned after having one of their sponsors back out. Now at number two is Discovery Island. This 11.5 acre island is located on Walt Disney World's property and was actually open to guests between 1974 to 1999. Walt bought the island in 1965 and it was initially called Treasure Island. Park goers went there to look at wildlife because it was essentially a miniature zoo. You could look at animals like flamingos, swans, and more. Fun fact, the island's facilities were the last known home of the dusky seaside sparrow before it went extinct. Things got ugly in 1989 when Peter accused Disney of mistreating vultures that landed on the island. Disney actually even confirmed this by saying some of the birds died while employees tried to capture them. Officials then charged him with 16 counts of animal cruelty, but they were eventually dropped. The island closed in 1999 for undisclosed reasons and all of its animals got moved to Disney's Animal Kingdom. The island is still there, just sitting there, abandoned with zero signs of development. Funnily enough, a man went to the island in April of this year during the pandemic. He called it a tropical paradise and had no idea it was off limits. He was soon arrested. And finally, in our number one spot is River Country Park. River Country Park opened in 1976 and was the first water park at Walt Disney World. The park was designed to look like a swimming hole and had fake mountains with water slides. But a lot of tragedy occurred at this park, which contributed to being shut down. <laughs> In 1980, a boy was killed at the park after getting a bacterial infection from one of the pool's water. The bacteria attacked his brain and nervous system, which then killed him. Um, I was smiling all throughout she was talking about that death. I wasn't smiling at the death, I was just smiling at something Lindsay did beforehand. <laughs> I'm some sadistic fool. Either way, I digress. Then, just two years later, another boy passed away at the park. Sadly, he drowned after coming off of one of the water slides. Like, shortly after the first death, they would have improved things, you know, and all more safety measures, at least something. I guess not, because then in 1989, another boy drowned there. What's creepy is that their advertisements read, bring a swimsuit and a smile. You're likely to wear both out at River Country. More like, bring a swimsuit and a death wish. Like seriously, it's tragic what happened there. Oh god. The park then closed its doors in November of 2001, but most of it is still there. In fact, some say that the park is now haunted. People have speculated that the land is permanently cursed with bad luck, which is what makes it very attractive to urban explorers who go there. Mm, we should go there for a future video. Oh, mm. I don't know about that. <laughs> Alright, we're going to start off at number 10 now with the Pripyat Amusement Park. This is an abandoned park in Pripyat, Ukraine that was meant to be opened on May 1st, 1986. Unfortunately, just five days before that date, the nearby nuclear power plant at Chernobyl went into meltdown. Everyone in the area was forced to evacuate the city. As with everything else there, the park was left just as it was. Radiation levels there have been among the highest levels recorded in the whole of Pripyat. Even today, you will need special permission to get even close. Moving on to number 9 now, we have Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. This park in southern West Virginia was abandoned in 1966 after the accidental deaths of two children. A little girl in a pink ruffled dress died after climbing into this circling swing set. A little boy also drowned in the amusement park's swimming pond. Some say the park was cursed even before its creation, after being built on the ground where deadly murders took place between Native Americans and European settlers during the late 1700s. The park opens up sometimes for tours in the week before Halloween and some people have sworn they've seen the little girl there in her dress covered in blood and just staring at them. Next up at number 8 now we have Spree Park. This is an abandoned park in Berlin that opened in 1969. At its height the park attracted over 1.5 million people per year. It boasted a roller coaster, two game water courses, a stage, a western town and an English village. By 1999 though the park was struggling to cope with large debts. They increased the admission fee, but that only served to drive away visitors. By 2001, they entertained just 400,000 visitors a year. The park closed the following year. In the years since then, a fire devastated major parts of the park. It's thought that someone intentionally did this. These days, Spree Park is nothing more than a creepy, burnt out husk with no certain plans for the future. Next up on number 7 now, we have Six Flags New Orleans. When Hurricane Katrina struck the Caribbean and southern US states, it devastated 
a lot of places. One of them was the Six Flags Amusement Park in New Orleans. As you can see from these images, the damage was so immense that the owners were just forced to abandon it altogether. The only visitors to the site now are trespassers who rip fences and leave graffiti. The place is also home to boars, snakes and other animals that have taken advantage of the lack of human presence. Next up at number 6 now we have Encore Garden. This abandoned park in Taiwan lies just east of Tai Chung City. It was extremely popular during the 1990s, attracting visitors from all around. Then, in unclear circumstances, the park just closed. Rumors spread about what the reason could be. Some say there was a serious accident on the huge ferris wheel that the park was known for. Others maintained that an earthquake in 1999 caused damage that was just too serious to repair. Next up at number 5 now we have Gulliver's Kingdom. This theme park was built in the shadow of Japan's Mount Fuji and was partially funded by the government. The ride centered around the story of Gulliver, a traveler who discovered an island full of tiny people. The park opened in 1997 but barely lasted 4 years. The reason for its failure are cited as a lack of main attractions but also its proximity to the notorious Suicide Forest, a place that earned its name from being a favoured suicide spot for people in Japan. At number 4 now we have Okpo Land. This amusement park is on the outskirts of Okpo in South Korea. It was very popular during the 90s and became one of Asia's most famous amusement parks. The duck ride became a crowd favourite but tragically people started getting seriously injured on it. Eventually someone died on it. There was outrage and Okpo Land offered no compensation or apology. In 1999 a little girl died after one of the duck carts derailed and capsized. The park was closed soon after that. The derailed cart that killed the girl was still left hanging over the edge. It became a popular site for urban explorers until it was demolished in 2011. At number 3 now we have Daddy Park. Built in 1950 this was Belgium's first private amusement park, built for children of pilgrims visiting the nearby basilica. It was successful for many years but that all came to an end in 2000. The Nautic Jet Ride was notoriously dangerous but no improvements were ever made to it. In that year a boy lost his arm on the ride. The park struggled on for a while but closed down in 2002 for renovations. For whatever reason those renovations never took place and the park was abandoned, never to reopen again. Today it remains almost as it was left. Parts of it were demolished but many of the buildings and smaller attractions remain. Next up at number 2 now we have Wonderland Amusement Park. This park in China was supposed to be the country's answer to Disneyland's Cinderella Castle. It was still in development in 2000 when the plug was pulled on the whole project. According to National Geographic, the developer, local government and farmers all could not agree on the value of the land and so work was stopped while the castle was only half built. Despite the owners abandoning Wonderland Park, the locals did not. They still tend to the plants that grow around the castle and apparently use the castle itself as a communal activity center. And finally at number 1 now we have Joyland. This park in Kansas was once the largest in the state and boasted 20 rides for kids and adults alike. It ran for more than 50 years until 2004. That was the year a 13 year old girl fell from the ferris wheel and sustained major injuries. The park closed down to assess its own safety. Although it planned to open again in 2006, it never did. The owners have since demolished most of the major attractions. Starting us off at number 10 is Six Flags New Orleans. Now this was the one coming up the most in all my searches so I thought it was only fitting that we started with this one. Now this 140 acre park originally opened its doors in 2000 as Jazz Land but was leased by Six Flags from 2002 till 2009 and that's when its name was changed. However tragedy stuck in the morning of August 29th 2005 when Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. Since the park was located right next to Lake Pontchartrain the water flooded into the park and the drainage pipes just couldn't keep up. After all was said and done the park was under 20 feet of water and it took more than a month to drain. How screwed up is that? Due to the major wind and water damage the park was closed indefinitely and I don't think you guys realize how bad it actually was. 80% of the buildings were demolished, every single flat ride was destroyed and the one ride that kind of survived was the Batman the Ride roller coaster. The company didn't want to rebuild the park since it was their least profitable one anyway and tried to leave their 75 year lease but the mayor was like nah you have to rebuild. Either way the park's donezo. Coming in at number 9 is Auto World. Located in Flint, Michigan, Auto World was an indoor theme park that started its operation back in 1984. The plan was to try and get tourists to come to Flint and at its grand opening the governor even said it would trigger the rebirth of the great city of Flint. It took two decades of planning and it opened with a huge parade and a lot of media attention. It was 
predicted that it would bring in a million guests a year, but by the fall of that year, the numbers were already going down. The attractions included a replica of historic downtown Flint, a cabin with mannequin Jacob Smith inside of it, a Ferris wheel, a carousel, a historical carnival ride, and more. By December of that year, it was announced they'd only be open during weekends, and by January, they'd closed it down completely. Yes, the park opened for brief periods over the next few years, but by 1994, it was permanently closed. Damn, what a rough go. Didn't even last one proper year of being open full time. Yikes. At number 8, we have Six Flags Astro World. Am I the only one that thought Six Flags made some deal with Travis Scott and it was gonna be somehow related to him? I was gonna be like, I'm the highest in the room, and then I realized I got it way off. <laughs> Open in 1968, Astro World was a seasonal park located in Houston, and it was actually meant to be part of Astro Dome initially, but was sold to Six Flags in 1975. The park had 10 themed areas, and its water park sister, Water World, became part of it in 2002. There was a 610 limited train, Alpine Valley, and Oriental Village. I just hate the word Oriental to describe things in the West. Like, I know for a fact by Oriental Village, they mean an East Asian inspired theme, and Oriental just feels like they're trying to other you, and I just don't like it. Anywho, rant over. Anyway, on the 12th of September 2005, it was announced that Astro World would be closing and getting demolished. Despite wanting to sell it for $150 million, they ended up selling it for $77 million, which is a shocking loss. Filling at number 7 slot is Six Flags Dubai. Again, another knife to the heart with this one. First Dubai land and now this. Now the planned theme park was in the works for years and was initially meant to open way back in November of 2011. Then due to a failed payment, the contract was terminated but then revived and scheduled to open in 2019. And it was going to be colossal, taking up 5 million square feet. It had 27 rides with rides themed after other Six Flag locations like Magic Mountain from the California location, etc. The construction of the park stopped in 2018 since Dubai already has three other huge parks Legoland Dubai, Motion Gate Dubai, and Bollywood Park, and none of those were pulling in the numbers they wanted, so the shareholders were like, maybe this isn't in our best interests and just ditch the project. Now, at number six is Wyandotte Lake. This park had humble beginnings, it kind of like started from the bottom, now we eat. <laughs> Operating as a picnic and recreational park way back in 1896. In the 40s, it was changed into winter storage for carnival rides, but slowly but surely, they start adding rides like the Jet Flyer. In 1995, Premier Parks bought the property and they decided to keep the park's name and continue operating. Fun fact basically, Premier Parks was what Six Flags was called before obviously they changed the name and acquired the Six Flags company. <laughs> By 2006, Six Flags revealed they had been losing money from the park every year since 1999 and that they were going to sell it to Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. The latter invested something like $45 million to redevelop the whole place, whereas Six Flags was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> nope. Coming in at number 5 is Six Flags Atlantis. I used to hate water parks as a kid since I couldn't go with my glasses and because I didn't wear contacts back then I just could not see and it just pissed me off. Anyway, as you could have guessed, Six Flags Atlantis was a water park in Hollywood that opened up back in 1979. Well, initially it was a private venture called Atlantis the Water Kingdom, but they didn't have enough money to finish it, so Six Flags was like, here we are, sell it to us. Now, the water park included a lake with water ski shows, a wave pool, duh, seven story slide tower, and more. Now, unfortunately, due to another hurricane, Hurricane Andrew, the park was hugely damaged in 1992 and it was closed and auctioned off. Nowadays there's a cool plaza that takes up the space, there's now a Kmart instead of a wave pool, so I mean a downgrade for sure, but I mean times are tough you guys. And number 4 is Six Flags Power Plant, which sounds like the shittiest theme park ever, like how is that name appealing at all? Hey guys, you wanna have fun at the power plant? Like no, that has no ring to it. Located inside the Inner Harbor District of Baltimore, Six Flags acquired the property in 1985 and tried to turn it into an indoor theme park. This was their chance at making basically Auto World 2.0, and it was actually more successful than its predecessor. But it also closed down very quickly and transformed into a hard rock cafe, then a gold's gym, a Barnes and Noble, and so on. 
filling at number three slot is Warner Bros. Movie World Germany. So this park started off as a family owned thing back in 1967 and was sold to numerous different people throughout the years. In 1994, Warner Bros. bought it and started building what was Warner Bros. Movie World Germany and had the grand opening two years later. It had a bunch of attractions and rides and was split into seven different areas. There was the Hollywood Street set which showed Area 51, The Lost Temple and Looney Tunes 4D. There was a Street of New York thing, Nick Clan, Santa Monica Pier, the Old West and so on. By the end of 1999 they had sold it to Premier Parks which is again what Six Flags used to be called but the other attractions that came in the following years made the park very unpopular. Families stopped coming and soon even adrenaline junkies stopped coming and that's when you know it's bad when even they stopped coming. Eventually they sold it to Star Parks and they opened it as Movie Park Germany which is what it still currently is. Now at number 2 is Six Flags Worlds of Adventure. Initially opening at Giaga Lake in 1887, this recreation area was bought by Premier Parks in 1995 and renamed to Six Flags Ohio. Then with the acquisition of SeaWorld Ohio, the two parks became Six Flags Worlds of Adventure and I don't even think I have to go into how problematic and bad SeaWorld is. You guys know, you've seen the documentary Blackfish, I don't have to tell you. Now the park got 20 additional new rides including Roadrunner, Express, Villain, Batman, Night Flight, etc. They wanted to add rides to SeaWorld as well, but by combining the park, SeaWorld created the biggest theme park in the world at that time. The SeaWorld side stayed the wildlife area featuring mainly marine shows, well not really shows, more like exploitation and entrapment and depression and just not treating the animals right, but anywho. They then expanded that side further by adding Hurricane Mountain, which was the largest water slide in North America, which is ridiculous. Sadly, by 2004, they were facing high debt and sold the park to Cedar Fair, who closed down the park in September of 2007, and good riddance to those. And finally, at number one is Wild Waves and Enchanted Village. The park has a super long history as well, so it opened up as the Enchanted Village back in 1977, and it was hugely popular in the summer in the Washington area. It had around 6 rides and took up 12 acres but in 1984 the Wild Waves water park was built right next to it. Then in 2000, Six Flags bought it for 19.3 million dollars and at this point it had expanded to 70 acres with over 20 rides. They thought of splitting the park into two separate parks in 2016 to make more money and it worked but they had this whole park hopping ticket thing that was super complicated that all the customers just hated so they were like okay let's not do this. In 2007, they sold the park to CNL Income Properties, and it's a good thing they did too, because in 2016, there was a drowning incident in the activity pool. You know what I mean? A 33 year old man had drowned, which a bunch of kids had reported to the lifeguard, but initially they thought he was just playing a prank on them by lying at the bottom of the pool, but they stopped laughing once they realized that guy truly be dead. At number 10, we have Creepy Log Ride. So this Creepy Log Ride comes out of Beijing, Xi Jing Shan Amusement Park. Some people call it fake Disneyland, apparently. So the the park itself is still in operation, but half of the rides are closed down and there is overgrown vegetation everywhere. Because of that, this log ride feels abandoned, but you can give it a ride yourself. It is pretty eerie though. There are wildflowers and cracked soil on the land around the ride, and all the props and decorations around the track are weathered down. The ride itself is a pretty slow, lazy river water ride, and it's flanked by figurines and other decorations, but honestly it seems like Mother Nature is trying to take over. For me, the creepiest part is the figurines. They have these kangaroos that look like they've seen something that scarred them for life. And all of the animals look like they're just up to no good. And honestly, that's all I can say about that. We're gonna move on. It's kinda creepy, it's just moving so slow. Ugh. At number nine, we have Fantasy Dream Train Ride. So this one is a little more refined, but just wait for it, okay? Fantasy Dream Train Ride is located in Lot World Theme Park in Seoul, South Korea. You start by passing through a clown's mouth and going down a tunnel of light. Already, you start getting Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory kind of vibes. There is slow, cheery music in the background, and the ride enters a dark room with glowing orbs of light that flicker, and this giant, lifelike statue of a guy who is speaking over the sounds 
of crickets or cicadas or some kind of bug. <laughs> So the music fades out there and it's just you and that giant talking to you. It's creepy. Anyways, next is a frog room where high pitched voices are saying ribbit, which leads to a forest room with these creepy flower things. <laughs> And so if you think their faces aren't bad enough, when I noticed their mouths moving, I almost jumped out of my chair. These beings' eyes are unmoving, but their mouth bobs up and down just like, it, it's not lifelike at all, but still very cringy. And I didn't mind the bees at the end though, they're just bopping around. <laughs> But it doesn't end there. There are creepy animals you pass in a town, and then you enter a clown's mouth again to another creepy, cheerful room. There is a jelly bean house with mice and a wizard, and then it gets all dark and the music quiets, and then ride goers go back into the hype. It's it's a lot, honestly. All in all, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the location of a horror movie, because it's just clowny nightmare fuel. Imagine that, just kind of like dark and eerie at night and you're walking through and you bump into something and it's animatronic that goes, hi! <laughs> no! <laughs> but moving on to number eight, Jurassic Jungle Boat Ride. So in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, you can even see that there's people outside the ride gathering to watch. But no, wait, those are mannequins. Except for this guy. This guy from my nightmares. On the ride, you enter through the double wooden doors into a dark cavern. There's a ringing sound and it goes dark. The dino animatronics are lightly lit and come peering at the riders. <laughs> animatronics on their own are just creepy, that's my opinion. So this dino that's nodding its head, I don't trust it, okay? I just don't. So this part of the ride that seals the deal is the noise. So the ambiance is haunting and it's all because of the tech design. There are echoing dinosaur screeches and a low resounding hum with the sounds of nighttime bugs to give you that eerie alone feeling. <laughs> then at one point a child is carried away by a pterodactyl too, yeah. And it's slowly without the wings flapping so it's just gliding through like this. Kind of like a flying squirrel, if you do. It's a pretty long ride too, so if you're up for some creepy dinos, strap in for at least an eight minute ride. Next, at number seven, is Visa Clown. So this ride isn't quite creepy for the ride itself, but because of the creepy clown, or clowns on it. So at the Everton County Fair on one of the rides is this creepy looking bugger, and he's holding a child with flashing red eyes, and there are more clowns around the machine. At one point, were clowns like this supposed to be charming? The scariest ride of all time. Who would see these faces and think, oh, that's cute for my kid, and the clown's face is just like, N it's not cute. <laughs> I'm not outright afraid of clowns in general, no, but this artistic interpretation, just downright creepy, honestly. Plus, with rides at county fairs, you never really know how up to code they are. I, I fear that, you know? I risk it either way, but you don't really know I feel. Right? At number six, we have the Nightmare Experiment. So this ride is in Disney Hong Kong only. It is a Halloween scare house with Disney characters in it. So to name a few that are featured in here, there is the Mad Hatter, Pirates from Pirates in the Caribbean, and Mutant Toys from Toy Story. So your guide to the journey is the ominous professor, and there are shadow beings, dark walkways, and apparently that big baby head from Toy Story. And that's just creepy enough in itself. So they also have people in costumes, just like a haunted house. Hi! <laughs> and uh, in this creepy take, the Mad Hatter is in his own personal asylum. <laughs> the guy just standing. Yeah, just show the clip of the baby head again. That's all you need. <laughs> On to number five, I Corsari. So this ride in Godland in Italy is a large boat ride with scenes and drops and animatronics. And ah, yes, animatronics, just like this one.
It is a pig that is absolutely jacked and it's having its neck pulled off nearly by a child. So the pig kind of looks like a human in a pig skin suit. It's just not lifelike enough, but like enough that it's just ri it's uncanny valley, you know? It's ugh. The audio of the ride includes distant shrieking screams of children, creepy music, and all kinds of conversations. So I just feel like we know what we're in for. This dragon-like thing has the face of a person, and I feel like the ride operators have it pointed down because they know it's just not fit for human eyes, much less a child. <laughs> And hopefully there aren't kids on this ride because they have people hanging from the ceiling as props. As in death, like hung. This one just has creep hitting on all different levels. The face on a dragon, people hanging, creepy music, that weird pig, I can't. But let's move on to number four with one I think we all know. It's a small world. And yes, we know this, you know it would make the list. It's a small world ride at Disneyland. It's a creepy little world, in my opinion. Many people say it's the song itself that is just a source of fear on the ride because it just keeps repeating and it's just too cheery. Uh, yeah, unnerving, repetitive, feels like it's hiding something, all that jazz. But also look at the dolls. There are figurines with one or two predetermined movements and they look too fake to be real, but also lifelike enough to be unnerving. So for example, this little fisher. So it's just swinging up and down trying to get that walrus to do a trick, and it's just taking the realistic part out of life and leaving us with robots that are meant to feel wholesome, and it just feels fake, you know? And a bit creepy. Maybe I'm just creeped out by animatronics too much. I don't know. So let's move on to number three. It's a small world knockoff. So this knockoff, it's a small world, is in Suzhou Amusement Land in China. So it's another slow moving boat ride like a few others on this list. The music they play is distorted and creepy, and the dolls are worse. So in this one, the dolls look as if they are decaying or as if they are zombified dolls. Also, their eyes are uncomfortably wide and the dolls, like the dolls, any of the animals, anything, they just look scared. They also have bags under their eyes as if they are being like overworked and also a bunch of their arms are just reaching out to riders as if asking them for help. So the person who posted the video themselves said that the ride smelled like dead carcasses too. And also, just look at the bunny children. Try to tell me that doesn't give off some weird vibes, yeah? Also, last thing I'll point out, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles make an appearance on this ride. For what reason? I'm not sure, but I'm guessing to protect us from the others. Moving on to number two, Tower of Terror. So the Tower of Terror at Disney World is aimed to be a bit of a scary ride already, and yeah, I would say it works for me, honestly. And yes, there are the ghosts that are planned during the ride, but there is a rumor of a real ghost, the ghostly bellhop. So all of the cast members that work there are bellhops for the hotel. The story goes that one of the bellhops, or cast members, loading in the guests dropped dead on the spot as he was letting them onto a platform. He was loading Platform D, also known as Platform Delta, and is said to haunt the platform on the ride. When cast members have to ride the ride at the end of the night to make sure it runs as it should, they individually ride on platforms A, B, and C, but ride on Delta altogether. Lights would flicker on and off, there could be technical errors, and the cast members would see a figure out of the corner of their eye. Riding together makes them feel a little less creeped out. And so who knows if that is true, and honestly the ride is already scary enough on its own for me. Yes, can children go on it? But I am afraid. <laughs> Lastly, at number one, we have Pirates of the Caribbean. And I need to disclose for this one, I can't handle those skeletons. I, ah, I just die looking at them. So for this one, I don't care what you think. I can't deal with the skeletons. I couldn't watch the movies when I was younger. I was terrified. So no, I will not go on this ride. There is no way in Sam Heck you couldn't get me in line. If you somehow did, I would bail last minute, say I felt sick, and after you finished the ride, you would see me at the end holding a basket of fries and living my best life. That's just how it goes. But let's talk about the ride. There's the creepy Captain Animatronic and someone being dunked and drowned in a well. Captain Jack himself just looks creepy, just swaying side to side. But 
just all of the animatronics are hitting that uncanny valley for me and really off-putting. Plus the skeletons. I cannot, okay? Ten. So we're talking about Oakwood Theme Park. And I'm talking about the theme park in Pembrokeshire, Wales. So back in April, a 16 year old girl was identified as Haley Williams. She visited a theme park where she decided to go to Europe's fastest and wettest water ride. Well, she sadly fell to her death from the top of the ride. She was airlifted to the hospital where she was pronounced dead there. So Haley was on this ride with a group of friends. There was a 10 year old sitting in front of her who was also injured. And he was taken to the hospital with head injuries. There was a lawsuit that lasted years. But in 2008, the park was fine. 250,000 British pounds. There was an investigation that revealed basic safety procedures that was widely ignored by staff overseeing the ride. The day that Haley died, 87% of all passengers were not safety checked. Now in at the number 9 spot, we have the Discovery Cove in Orlando, Florida. This is where a 59 year old man, Keith Clark, he went on holidays, but poor Keith ended up getting a blood infection after stubbing his toe on a piece of coral. He was rushed to the hospital and not one, but two of his legs were gone. All of them, all two, both. Sadly, Keith ended up dying from the blood infection. Now, before the accident, Keith did suffer from a condition called hemophilia. It's a disorder that impairs the body's ability to control blood clotting. Now, although my legs are short, I like them the way they are, so I think I'm staying away from Discovery Cove. I'm gone. Moving on to New Jersey's Action Park. This theme park has a bad history, and they come in to number... They have been considered to have the worst reputation of any amusement park in history. There's a top 10 list of this amusement park alone in all its dangerousness. This place has a perfect storm for unsafe rides. One man died when one of the rides he was on, the car leaped off the alpine slide, causing him to smash his head into a rock. There was a huge lawsuit that followed this terrifying accident. The lawsuit was too much for the park, so the owners were forced to close it down. A few years later, it reopened up by a new company, and this new company now emphasizes on safety. Okay. So at number seven, we have this ride at Coney Island, the Cyclone. It's located in New York. And now right off the bat, I do have to say that it's a wooden roller coaster. Enough said. The Cyclone was built back in 1927 and the ride has been linked to several injuries and deaths. One of the most recent accidents involved a 53 year old man by the name of Keith Shirasawa. He snapped his neck because of the force of the first drop in the ride. Also back in 2008, a woman by the name of Paula Noon, she was awarded $1.5 million after suffering injuries from the ride as well. She got a severe neck injury, but here's the thing. Five years earlier, she did have a neck injury, but she said, however, at the time of her injuries caused by the cyclone ride, her previous injuries were completely healed, so what she's suffering now is 100% due to this ride. So in at number six, we have 19 riders hurt and one woman dead. And this happened at the Fujin Rajin 11 roller coaster. And this is at Expo Land, which is located in Suita, Osaka, Japan. This is a six car roller coaster in which passengers stand through the course of the ride. Well, it derailed and it hit a guardrail. This happened when a wheel, one of the axles broke. The person who lost her life was identified as 19 year old Yoshino Kogawara, who was from Higasha Omi Shiga. She died after her head was stuck in the guardrail. Her friend has sustained serious injuries as well. The president of the park apologized for the loss, for this was a bad tragic accident that happened on Children's Day. 31 people were taken to the hospital. There was an investigation and they found out that the ride's vehicle axles has not been replaced in 15 years. Is this real life right now? So the park was shut down for months and was reopened up, but then it was shut down again because customers wouldn't go to this amusement park. I wonder why. One accident is all it takes. So now we're halfway through at number five. This is the Derby Racer Roller Coaster. Wait, wait, what? Another wooden roller coaster? L Landon, you gotta be covering another one of these? You know I hate these stuff. Built back in 1911, this was one of the first ever wooden roller coasters ever created. And as you can see from the black and white photos, it looks like something created in the BC era. Shortly after the ride opened, on June 8th, 1911, a young man was catapulted from the ride and splat. Six years later, another man was thrown off the ride. He landed in front of the ride and ended up getting run over by it. So uh, th this ride has two negatives going for it. One, it's killing people, and two, it's sexist. Men are dying, only. The third fatality caused by this ride happened in 1929, and 
Just guess what the gender of the person was. The courts in Massachusetts ruled for this ride to be completely demolished. This was in 1936. It took them that long to shut this thing down. They opened up a ride with the same name one year later, but then that was demolished just over 10 years after opening. Coming in at number four, we're talking about a place that brings in over 290 million people a year. This is one of the most popular parks ever, and I'm talking about Six Flags. They're actually known for many accidents. Six Flags in Kentucky Kingdom back in 2007, a 13 year old girl severed her feet on the Superman Tower ride. In 1981, at Six Flags in New Jersey, a park employee fell to his death, and this is during a ride test. 2008 in Georgia, a teenager decapitated his head while riding the Batman ride. That story made it all over Fox News. A man died when a sky bucket gondola broke from a cable and fell to the ground below. This gondola was rocking back and forth. There was a man who was thrown from the final turn of the Superman ride, and I'm talking about the ride of steel roller coaster. He was rushed to the hospital but lost his life from the impact. Scary moments from Six Flags just goes on and on and on. For you guys who love Six Flags, I'm sorry for scaring you. I was actually planning to go to Six Flags next month, man, but you ruined it for me. I'm sorry, man. Now here is number three. Let's take you all the way from the US to Canada. Way up there. Alberta to be exact. This ride is a mind bender at the Galaxy Land, and the mind bender definitely lives up to its name. It's the world's largest triple loop ride. It's also described as one of the most safest rides in the world. But clearly you know that's a big lie because it made it on this list. Back in 1986, there were missing bolts on the ride that caused a four car train to fly off the track. The last car smashed into the support structures, which caused it to then crash into a concrete pillar. And this crash ended up in front of a huge audience that was watching a concert. Like, whoa, talk about close call. Like, you're watching your favorite band perform, and then a roller coaster car just lands right beside you? That could have killed more people. Three people on the ride did end up dying, and the fourth person suffered severe neck and chest injuries. So we are finally in at number two and we're talking about Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at Disneyland. So there was a couple incidents. Why don't you start us off? Yeah, so the first one involved a five-year-old boy. He got his foot caught between the car and the edge of the platform and the car moved and all his toes ended up being amputated. So this happened back in 1998, March 10th. The second accident was in 2003 when a 22-year-old man died after suffering some severe blunt trauma and extensive internal bleeding in a derailment of the Disneyland Resort Big Thunder Mountain Railroad roller coaster. 10 other people were also injured. The ride went under investigation. There was never any lawsuit, but I'm sure Disney paid them a large amount of money to settle it. So finally, we've all made it into the number one spot. So we're talking about a very recent accident that happened at Elton Towers. It involved a 17 year old girl by the name of Leah Washington. She was involved in a very serious accident on one of the rides famously known known as the Smiler. But nobody was smiling after this because both of her legs were amputated. So Leo was rushed to the hospital where she was only kept alive by a life support machine. She was kept in intensive care. Along with her amputated leg, she also fractured her hand in the accident. Now currently there's a multi-million dollar lawsuit in progress after the Alton Towers did admit to being responsible for the crash. The crash also involved four other people being seriously injured. So weeks after that, there was another crash where 16 people were seriously Injured. Starting us off at number 10 are the cables. So this one took place at Six Flags Kentucky Kingdom on the ride dubbed the Superman Tower of Pride. A young girl was on the ride with a few friends and as it was getting to the top, the group had a cable snap. Looked up and saw a bunch of cables coming towards them left, right and center. The cables started whipping around injuring the group's faces and this was when the ride was only 20 feet off the ground. And I feel like I don't know how no one was like, oh maybe something's wrong with the ride. At that point, no no one thought to stop the ride and so they started being taken higher and that was when the black smoke and smell of burnt rubber started kicking in. And on a roller coaster, that's just not a good look, it's not a good sign. The girls kept shouting to stop the ride as the cables kept hitting them, even wrapping it around their necks at some points. When the girls finally landed on ground, the smell of burning flesh was just overpowering. Turns out one of the girls feet had been severed off completely and they managed to reattach her right foot but her full left leg had to be amputated and the ride is very much so an operation till this day. Where do these cables come from? Where How are they falling from the sky and just severing people's feet off? 
No. Coming in at number 9 is the Texas Giant. Now this ride is located at the Six Flags in Arlington, Texas and this is huge hybrid roller coaster that mixes wooden architecture and steel engineering together. Another Six Flags story, should I be worried? I've never been, should I just not go? Now the ride drops 14 stories at a 79 degree drop and reaches speeds of 65 miles per hour. So back in July of 2013, a 52 year old guest at the park decided to go on the ride but during its descent she was thrown 75 feet from the ride. Can you imagine? I would actually like. Ugh. Now, on her way down, she hit a metal support beam and landed on a metal roof and then obviously died from her injuries. The ride was shut down immediately after, but reopened after internal investigations found no mechanical issues within the ride whatsoever. The park settled a lawsuit with the woman's family worth approximately a million dollars. You know those dreams you have when you're like falling and then you suddenly wake up? Just imagine it's not a bloody dream and you're falling off a roller coaster to your death. At number 8 we have the Trio. Kings Island Amusement Park in Ohio opened up back in 1972 and is still in operation till this day. Other than the amusement park, the island also has a cemetery on it in which a little girl was buried after dying at some point in the 1800s. This girl, dubbed Tram Girl or Missouri Jane, her ghost is often seen in and around the Whitewater Canyon ride. Just doing, you know, ghostly things, you know, like giggling, splashing water on people who aren't even near the ride and so forth. Now, Racer Boy is another ghost seen around the shooting Star Trek at Coney Island. His spirit came with some of the ride's cars when they were relocated to Kings Island and looks wise he's just a little boy wearing a white suit. Not very harmful, he's not that dangerous. Last but not least is John Harter, aka Tower John, a young man who fell to his death in 1983 whilst climbing the Eiffel Tower at the entrance of the park. How true to size was this Eiffel Tower that this man died after climbing it? I thought it would just be like one of those mini ones. Clearly not. Filling out of the seven slot is the Haunted Castle. So this one's located at the Six Flags Great Adventure Amusement Park in Jackson, New Jersey. Another Six Flags, that's three already. I'm worried. I'm not going. I'm not going. Now, guests at the park have reported seeing teenagers wearing clothes from the 80s and 90s sitting around the park, but mostly around the haunted castle attraction. The teens who aren't real guests are apparently from an accident that took place at the ride back in 1984. Eight teenagers ended up getting trapped inside the ride and died in a resulting fire. Firefighters responding to the scene said they couldn't tell the real human bones from the prop skeletons, which is just a horrific thought. Like, can you imagine? Uh, uh, that's like my visceral reaction, you know, when there's just like a chill and you're like, uh. Now, at number six is Drop Zone. I love rides like this where it takes you really high up and then basically drops you, making you free fall. It gives me major anxiety in my stomach, but they're so fun still, so I'm just like, whatever, deal with it, it'll be over in two seconds. Either way, this ride's located at California's Great America and the Drop Zone did not end well for 12 year old Joshua Smurfat. Joshua was disabled both mentally and physically, but that wouldn't have prevented him from riding safely. Each person was locked in by a shoulder harness, yet somehow on the 224 foot drop down, Joshua slipped out of the harness and fell off the ride dying instantly. Oh, that gave me anxiety just thinking about that. His mom filed a lawsuit claiming you don't go to an amusement park and leave without your child. You don't leave without your child and then have to plan their funeral. Despite heavy investigation, no one could figure out what caused the accident or how he slipped out of the harness but the ride is still very much in operation. Whenever I'm on that ride at Wonderland, I'm always like making sure, I'm like checking, I'm like am I in, am I in, am I in, I even make sure like the clerk's like am I in, am I good? not taking any chances, honey. Coming in at number 5 is Mrs. Muller. Muller's military horse was the intricate carousel horse that was carved in 1917 by Daniel Muller. The horse was meant to showcase his interest in pre-World War II cavalry mounts, but it's actually known for being the only haunted carousel horse in history. The story goes like this. Apparently after seeing the completed creation, Mrs. Muller fell in love with it so much so that even after she died, her ghost returned to Cedar Point Carousel just to ride it. She was so infatuated with the horse that her ghost made sure that no one else can photograph the horse or fall in love with it. She's been seen countless times riding the haunted steed, and that's a sentence I never thought I'd say. At 
number four is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, dubbed the happiest place on earth. We never really hear of anything going wrong at Disneyland, but things do go wrong, my friends. Back in September of 2003, one man died while 11 others were injured while riding the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, which I mean isn't even the most adrenaline inducing rides, but it's one of those filler ones that you just have to go on when you're like waiting in between the better rides. You know what I mean? You guys know what I mean. Either way, during the ride, the open passenger train cars somehow separated from each other and the coaster completely came off its tracks. Riders were trapped while emergency responders were trying to save them and later investigation concluded that the staff hadn't followed the proper maintenance procedures and that's why the accident occurred to begin with. You can't sleep on maintenance procedures you guys. Not at a theme park. Have we not seen Final Destination 3? Filling our number 3 slot is Roller Coaster, and as anticlimactic as that title is, that's exactly what the ride is called. Located at the Lagoon Amusement Park in Utah, the ride's been the site of many tragic accidents. In 1989, a 13-year-old rider stood up in the car as soon as it crested a hill and then fell forward onto the tracks. She was then run over by two other cars before falling through the tracks 35 feet to the ground. Earlier in 1934, a 20-year-old was also killed while trying to stand up during the ride, which I don't even know why they were trying to do that. Like, do they not tell you that beforehand? Like, don't try and stand up on the ride, people. And I mean, despite that, you can still ride the roller coaster today. I would just advise to, you know, not stand up. How can you even stand up when they've like harnessed you in? I can barely even breathe at that point, let alone stand up. Now, at number two is Backward Roll. The Wildcat was a roller coaster located at Bell's Amusement Park in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and it was April 1997 when the unthinkable happened. The amusement park was extra packed during that period because of a 25 cent ride promotion, and so every ride was basically full every single time. The Wildcat coasters were being pulled to the highest point of the track, but instead of cresting over the top and going over it, it started going backwards at at a rapid pace and colliding with the coaster that was waiting. And can you imagine the momentum it would have hit the other coaster, like going all the way? Oh, gotta do the momentum calculations. <laughs> Now, a 14-year-old boy died and six others were badly injured, and because of the promotion, so, so many people saw the accident take place. The ride was disassembled, but then relocated to an amusement park in Maryland and called Avalanche. It's like the roller coaster was like, I never killed anyone. New name, who dis? And finally, at number one is the beheading, which I really never thought I'd want to talk about in regards to a roller coaster, but here we are. Now this, this one is Final Destination 3 level shit, I swear to God. So back in 2016, at the Schlitter Barn Water Park in Kansas City, 10-year-old Caleb Schwab was chuffed to be finally riding the Verrucht, German for insane. I googled that. The 168 foot tall water slide was Guinness certified as the tallest water slide in the world, but honestly from pictures it looks really shoddily made. The ride plummets down like 17 stories in seconds going at 70 miles per hour, but this ride should have never even opened. Even during test rides most of the sandbag dummies became airborne, yet they still somehow swept that under the rug and went through with the ride. While Caleb and two other riders were going down in the raft, it became airborne towards the end, causing him to hit his head on one of the metal rods holding the safety net in place above him, obviously leading to decapitation. The water park's owner and the slide's designer were charged criminally for death, yet the water slide continued to be operational for a full two years after the accident before being dismantled for good. At number 10, we have King Island, Ohio. All right, we're going to kick off this list with a theme park from the Northern American state. King Island is an amazing theme park because it's been double stacked. It's half amusement park, half water park. Dude, that means you could spend your day riding rides in the sun and then jump into a pool that is 90% pee to cool off. That sounds like a good Saturday afternoon to me. And on the amusement park side, it's loaded with 15 roller coasters. That means there's 15 places you could post up and watch people puke. Hilarious. Oh, and this park is old as hell. It was thrown up in 1972. Now, why is it on this list? Well, because there is a graveyard within the boundaries of the theme park, and it seems to have brought some unwanted guests. There have been sightings of several ghosts, specifically that of two kids, one who is a little girl in a blue dress and one who's a little boy wearing a white suit. I know these two are dead, but at least they get to spend the rest of their lives looking sharp as hell. You get to wear a white suit for the rest of your life? That's dope. In the number nine spot, we have the Lake Swanee Amusement Park. 
All right, we got an old creepy one for you guys. The Lake Suwannee Amusement Park was built in the 1920s because it was some businessman's dream to build something for the children of West Virginia. Well, it should have picked a better spot because this place used to be a native burial ground. People have estimated that 3,000 Native Americans were buried there. That's a lot of ghosts. On top of that, since the park has been open, there have been about six deaths. Most of them were kids. The place was closed down in 1966 because when you have a bunch of kids die at your park, it doesn't make it seem like it's a very good time. At number eight, we have Tataka Nanuma, Greenland, Japan. Boom, got that. All right, let's jump over to Japan now to what is probably one of the worst cases of workplace safety I have ever heard of. This place opened in 1973. The people were loving it. Everyone was going. They were singing dope anime songs. The place was a paradise. But after two years, it was closed down. Now the big wigs in charge of everything said that the place was shut down because they needed repairs. But the people who lived close to the amusement park said that it was shut down because too many people died there. Holy crap dude, back in 1973 people really let stuff slide before they would start to take action. Now if someone finds a hair in the Alfredo, they'll shut down an entire chain of restaurants. Just through a few tweets. Well, I guess they mopped up all the bodies because in 1986, they reopened for about 13 years and then closed down again. Now if you go and explore this abandoned amusement park, it's packed full of ghosts. There was even one case of a dude going in there for a little expedition back in 2007. He took a bunch of photos trying to capture the creepy landscape, but none of them came through. The only one that saved to his camera was of a little ghostly girl. Ugh, I hate ghost kids. At number seven, we have Holy Land, Waterbury, Connecticut. Yes, just what the public wants, a church themed amusement park. Hey kids, remember how we said we're gonna have fun all day, ride rides, eat ice cream, and get overexposed to the sun? Well, we're gonna do none of that. We're gonna go to the only amusement park with a chapel, and you're gonna pray and read the Bible. Woo, sounds like a blast. Well, this place was actually a hot spot in its heyday. It would pull in around 40,000 people a year, but the park was closed down for repairs in 1984 and then just two years later the owner died. Turns out no one wants to reopen and run an amusement park that replaced good times with Psalms. As the place became more and more run down, there have been many reports of ghost sightings and other creepy things. People passing by say they've seen the ghost of a woman standing in the gates. And in 2010, there was a girl found dead in the park. At number six, we have Disneyland, California. Let's go, baby. This place is super haunted. If you wanna see ghosts, well, this is the place to be. Go ride Space Mountain. There is a ghost that will sit next to people who have no one sitting beside them because he doesn't want them to be by themselves. That's so cool. And on the park grounds, there's a ghost of a woman who will protect lost children and take them to a safe place. I think they call that the lost and found. That's where we put lost kids, right? There's even the ghost of Walt Disney chilling in his old apartment. I love that Disneyland is such an awesome place that even the ghosts are friendly. Oh my God, it's so sweet. At number five, we have Raging Waters, California. Water park time. Let's go collect some band-aids. This place is massive and has been a long standing attraction in California. People just love zipping down slides and swimming in water that has enough dead skin in it to build your own film crew. And if you ever decided to make a trip down there, you should know that there's a little hidden attraction. Next to the first aid station is a ghost of a nine year old girl. It's said that the girl died in the park back in 1985 and her ghost has been floating around trying to find her parents. Very eerie. And number four, we have Thorpe Park in Surrey, England. So when in 1979, a man wanted to build a water themed amusement park on a lake and he did this by building a giant gravel pit and then placed the park right on top of it. It was a massive success. In fact, it's still open to this day. Honestly, the place has had very few problems until 2011 when they wanted to build an expansion on the park and the workers started to get so freaked out by ghostly sightings that they had to stop working. There was so much nonstop paranormal activity that the owner brought in a team of paranormal investigators and they found that the extension was digging into an ancient burial ground. So they decided to spend millions to move the extension to a different part of the park. That's how bad the ghost problem was. At number three, we have Taman Festival Park in Boston. Bali. This old abandoned park was thrown up in 1997 and for a time it was a major tourist attraction. People from all over the world were visiting this thing mainly to go check out what was the world's first inverted roller coaster. Very cool. That's amazing. Spiraling puke would fly right out of it. How many times am I going to talk about puke in this video? I don't know. I think puking is hilarious. I love talking about it. Send me puke videos. I'll 100% watch them and laugh at it. I love it. 
Back to the list. This place was shut down after a bolt of lightning smashed into the park on Friday the 13th. It did some major damage and there wasn't enough money in the bank to pay for the repairs. So now it's just abandoned. But all the locals in the area refuse to go near this thing. They say the park is a meeting place for evil from all over the island. And this old abandoned amusement park is called the most haunted place in Bali. At number 2 we have Pripyat Amusement Park in the Ukraine. I can't imagine how pissed I would be if I was the guy who spent the money to have this thing built. The Pripyat Amusement Park was just about a 10 minute drive from the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. This place was open for one day before word came through the winds that if they stayed there they would die. So they had to shut down right away. Now there might not be a ghost there but there's said to be the dark bird of Chernobyl. The dark bird of Chernobyl is said to be a mnemonic being who caused the meltdown of the nuclear power plant. Now it roams the land and I would assume murders people. I don't know what demons do in their spare time. And at number 1 on the list we have Magic Kingdom Florida also known as Disney World. The happiest place on earth, it's a place where you have to be happy or else. I wonder what happens if you walk around there all sad. I bet a guy dressed as Donald Duck puts a chloroform rag over your mouth and then drags you into a back room and they inject you with Walt Disney's blood until you're smiling. I mean that's what I guess, I, I don't know if that's true. Well this place also happens to be very haunted. Why? Because people bring their dead relatives ashes there to spread them over the park. It's such a problem that Disney World has a rule against it. It's said that the Pirates of the Caribbean ride workers, it said that the Pirates of the Caribbean ride is one of the most haunted places on the park. Every day when the workers come in they have to say good morning to George. If they don't say good morning to George the ride will break down for that day. Which I think is super dope. Say good morning to George. Also say good morning to Carl. Starting us off with number 10 is the Roger Rabbit cartoon spin. So back in September of 2000 Brandon Zucker was 4 years old when he fell from the Roger Rabbit cartoon spin ride at Disneyland. Brandon was dragged under the car causing severe internal injuries, brain damage and cardiac arrest. In a horrific turn of events he was stuck under the car for minutes where his diaphragm was ruptured, his liver and spleen was torn, his left lung had collapsed and he fractured his pelvis. The weirdest part was that the ride operator called his own supervisor before calling 911. Sus, very sus. As you can imagine he was in the ICU and was in a drug induced coma for weeks and after the incident Disney ensured his medical care would be covered for the rest of his life but he sadly ended up dying in 2009. Disneyland on the other hand had no problem closing down the ride but then opening it back up in 2001 after installing bumpers. Which I mean is that fully gonna prevent death? Who already knows? Coming in at number 9 is Tangled. Now, this one is horrific honestly. I saw the after picture of the victim and I was like oh my god. So back in May of 2016 11 year old Elizabeth Gilrath was at a carnival in Omaha and she was about to ride on the infamous Spinning King's Crown ride. But as the ride started and that ride is basically like a cylinder that you see and it goes round and round. There's one at Wonderland in Toronto, I've been on it, it's quite fun. But anyway, as the ride started, her long hair somehow got tangled into the ride's mechanisms, and her hair started getting ripped out from her head as she got flung around. Despite witnesses and people on the ride yelling for the ride operator to stop the ride, they were seen running from the ride either to get help or save their ass, I'm not really sure. A bystander eventually physically stopped the ride, but Elizabeth was in really bad condition by then. And I mean, the ride had already been going on for 10 minutes. So that was a lot of ripping and being flung around. The ride had ripped out parts of her scalp as well and when she got to the hospital she had already suffered critical muscle damage to her face. She couldn't speak, communicate or even open her eyes. But no one even knows how her hair got stuck in the mechanism and the ride is still open. But if you're gonna ride it maybe tie up your hair. At number 8 we have the Roaring Rapids. Now this ride located at the Six Flags in Texas was a site of a major accident back in 1999. One raft was carrying 12 people at the time it completely flipped over in 4 feet of water. The flip trapped many of the passengers underwater, one of which was a 28 year old woman called Valeria Cartwright who actually ended up drowning and passing away. 10 other people were also seriously hurt yet the ride is all shits and giggles right now like it never happened and like it could never happen again. Which it could. I feel like there have been so many rapid accidents that I've read about while researching for this video. It's not a joke. It is a fun ride though I have to admit. 
I try to go on it every time. Filling our number seven slot is the roller coaster. So back in August of 2016 at the Idlewild and Soak Zone Amusement Park, three-year-old Declan McLean was super excited to ride the roller coaster. When the ride rounded its highest point, Declan was ejected from the coaster, falling 10 feet and landing near a fence. He sustained a head injury and spent two months in the hospital, but there have been many possible factors discussed as to how this even happened. Firstly, Declan switched seats and went to sit next to his brother when he should have been sitting next to an adult. The ride was also 79 years old and had no secondary restraints. The roller coaster was closed down for two years before reopening once again. So I mean, ride at your own risk. Do sit next to an adult if you are small like Declan. I used to get so pissed when I was small and I was too short to ride any of the rides that really annoyed me because I was like, I'm big, I can do it, just let me on it. Now at number six is the Ferris wheel, which I thought was arguably one of the least dangerous rides you could go on, but clearly I was wrong. Back in June of 2011, 11-year-old Abaya Jones was riding the Ferris wheel at Marina's Landing Pier located in Wildwood, New Jersey. In some freak accident, Jones fell off her carriage and to her death, and the cause of that is still unknown nine years later. It was the only fatality or even accident ever recorded on the ride, and none have happened since either since it's still in operation. How do you fall off a ferris wheel? Like maybe she was leaning over the edge and just kind of tipped over, I feel. I feel like that's probably what happened. Coming in at number five is the Treetop Twister. So back in 2001, the Treetop Twister was a new ride at the Lightwater Valley theme park in North Yorkshire. The ride spins and basically takes you through a bunch of twists and turns and it was only a month old before a major malfunction occurred. Two carriages collided with one another, causing a 20-year-old university student to sustain serious spinal and head injuries. She was rushed to the hospital but did not make it and three other riders were badly injured as well. Apparently it was due to the worn out wheels, faulty wiring, and actions of the operator that caused the collision, but I mean, how could they be so worn out if they were only a month old? Now despite that accident, the ride is still open till this day. Will I be riding it? No. Do I recommend you guys riding it? No. At number four are the teacups. Forget what I said about the Ferris wheel being the least dangerous ride. I think it's definitely the teacup one. Either way, back in April of 2015, a 51-year-old man was sitting in the fairground teacup ride in Burley, England. But the thing is, the ride wasn't even in operation. He was just sitting in it, and the cups started getting towed on a trailer to another location, and the movement of that caused him to fall out of the teacup and sustain critical head injuries. An off-duty nurse saw him lying on the ground and tried giving him CPR on the scene, but by the time he got to the hospital, his conditioning was life-threatening and he did not survive. Why was he in the teacup if it was not even in operation at the time? Maybe he was just relaxing, just thought he'd sit in the teacup. Filling an three slot is the Tower of Terror. Now I've actually never tried the Tower of Terror. Even when I went to Disneyland as a kid, I just don't remember it. If you haven't been on it, it's essentially like a drop zone sort of ride, but you don't just go down, you go up as well. And this ride is really just not for us mere humans, honestly, after reading everything I have about this ride, it's just not for us, not built for us. In 2005, a 16 year old British tourist had a stroke and then a heart attack after riding the Florida version. In 2010, a 20-year-old man fell 25 feet at the California version but somehow survived. And finally, a year later in 2011, a 12-year-old Argentinian boy became paralyzed from the neck down after riding the Paris version. The California one has been closed down since, but the rest haven't, so I mean, go at your own risk. Now at number two is the Batman. You already know I'm a DC girl, I'm not a Marvel girl, however this is a Batman that I very much cannot get behind. So this one took place at Six Flags in Georgia back in June of 2008. A 17 year old boy jumped two fences that clearly said do not enter because he was trying to get his hat that he had lost on one of the rides. Just let it go bro, get a new hat, we're not doing the risk. As he got it and stood up, the Batman ride came at him full throttle and the bottom part of it straight up decapitated this boy. And I mean the ride is still in operation since it was a human error, not a mechanical one. But I mean they do have those signs up for a reason. You guys do not venture into the just greenery area because you will get decapitated. Finally, at number one is the Cyclone. The Coney Island Cyclone at Luna Park in New York City has been problematic for years and years now, yet it's still in operation and doing better than ever. Firstly, the ride travels at 60 miles per hour, and since its opening in 1927, three people have died after riding it. In 1985, a 29-year-old man stood up on the ride and was killed when his head was hit with a crossbeam. Why are people standing up on rides? I don't get that. Like, don't they specifically 
specifically tell you to just sit down and not stand up or move in your seats. Either way, a year later, another man was also killed after he fell off the roller coaster. And once a maintenance worker at the park was sitting at the back of the ride, just chilling, and he was seen standing up right before the ride's first descent. And so he fell 30 feet, landed on a crossbeam, and died instantly. Who is standing up on rides? I don't get it. Starting off this countdown, we have Rye Playland. Located in Rye, New York, Playland, otherwise known as Rye Playland, was built in 1928 and has a variety of rides for everyone. But I should mention that these rides aren't the safest. Since 1938, a number of different accidents have occurred at the park. In 2004, a young guest was thrown from a ride and died. This ride is still in commission at the park. Then in 2005, another young guest was thrown from a different ride and died. In 2007, a park supervisor passed away on another ride. And back in 1998, a girl choked to death on chewing gum after it got lodged in her throat while on a ride. But it's not only the rides that are dangerous at this park. It's the food as well. A lot of people get sick off of the park's food. Health inspectors found that they had a problem with rats, chipping lead paint, and birds would defecate over the barbecue areas, meaning bird poop was getting mixed in with the food. No thank you. In our ninth spot, we have Schlitterbahn Park. What a name. Well, this park is famous for throwing people from raft rides in midair. You would think that they would get this issue fixed since it happened a bunch of times. But no. In 2016, a boy died after being launched from this ride. He flew off of the ride and hit a metal rod, which decapitated him. The ride is said to be the tallest in the world. Well, when you have people dying on it, maybe it shouldn't be the tallest in the world. It wasn't until two years later that the water slide was decommissioned. Coming in at number eight, we have Galaxy Land Amusement Park. Opened in 1985, Galaxy Land is a theme park located in West Edmonton Mall in Canada. Just saying, I don't trust rides inside of malls. Well, one of the rides in particular was quite dangerous. The Mind Bender. With a name like that, you know it's gonna be deadly. In 1986, one of the screws came out of the wheels in the last car on the train. The car disengaged from the track, flinging guests to the ground. The car then smashed into a concrete pillar. Three people were killed and 19 were left injured. In our seventh spot, we have Discovery Cove. Located in Florida, Discovery Cove, owned by SeaWorld, allows guests to interact with a variety of marine life. These mammals are obviously held there against their will. As humans, we think we have control over them, but we don't. There are a bunch of examples as to why it's dangerous to interact with dolphins or whales or other wild mammals. But the park ignores these facts and continues to operate. I mean, at SeaWorld in 2010, a trainer was killed after one of the show whales grabbed her ponytail, pulled her into the pool, and swung her back and forth. It was horrific. A lot of people have posted about their concerns about going to Discovery Cove. They're afraid they will be the victim of a vicious attack. In January of 2009, a man died after cutting his toe on coral while swimming with the fish. He was hemophiliac and ended up suffering from septic shock and organ failure. He had to get his legs amputated below the knee to prevent infections, but he still sadly passed away. Then on August 16, 2011, three guests and five employees were injured after lightning struck inside the cove. On top of that, several park employees have sued the park for for personal injuries. Coming in at number six, we have Coney Island Park. The amount of deaths and injuries that have occurred at this park is insane. In 1991, a car flew off the ride, resulting in one death and eight injuries. In 1996, the bolts on the jumbo jet ride became loose, and the car derailed from the track and crashed into a pole. In 2007, a restraining lap bar broke, causing a guest to fall out of her seat, knocking her unconscious. And now we have the Coney Island Cyclone, a very popular but deadly ride. In 1985, a man was killed on this ride after he stood up and his head hit a crossbeam. Okay, that's kind of his fault, I know, but still, it's scary. In 1988, a maintenance worker died after falling from this ride. In 2007, a man broke several vertebrae while riding the cyclone. He died four days later. The list goes on and on, like, it's quite scary. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Kings Island. Kings Island is known 
as the largest amusement park and water park in the Midwest. But of course, over the years, they have had a number of scary incidents occur at the park. The scariest thing that happened occurred on June 11, 1991. Just an hour after opening, a man fell into a pond, and two men died of electrical shock while trying to save him. And they don't even know how this happened. Employees have entered the pond before to remove trash, and they've never been electrocuted. Then, just an hour later, a woman fell 60 feet to her death after her harness malfunctioned on the flight commander ride. Over the years, other ride malfunctions have caused a number of injuries all across the park. A lot of them seem to be freak accidents, but either way, the park now has a reputation of being haunted or cursed. In our fourth spot, we have River Country. I know I've talked about this abandoned Disney park before, but it was honestly so deadly, like I just have to mention it again. And it's surprising since it was owned by Disney, right? You think it's like a happy little place. So River Country Park opened in 1976. It was the first water park at Disney World. But over the years, a lot of tragedies occurred at the park, forcing them to close. In 1980, a boy was killed at the park after getting a bacterial infection from one of the pool's water. The bacteria attacked his brain and nervous system, which killed him. Then just two years later, another boy passed away at the park. He drowned after coming off one of the water slides. Then in 1989, another boy drowned there. Finally, the park closed in November of 2001. In our third spot, we have Walt Disney World. Yes, I know it's shocking that this one's on the list. Disney World is such a huge amusement park. One of, if not the most famous park in the world. But a lot of accidents have occurred at the park. Most kept secret by the park so they don't ruin their reputation. Here are just some of the accidents that happened there. In 1979, a 31-year-old woman died riding Space Mountain. She was found unconscious in her seat, but staff ended up sending her on the ride again. A young guest drowned in Cinderella's castle moat, and then in 2003, a guest was killed on the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad ride after it derailed. Ten of the other passengers on the ride were injured. Then in 2004, a worker got run over by a float during the parade and died. We also have the man that fell to death on the Haunted Mansion ride. And one of the most famous deaths involved 18 year old Debbie Stone. She was a hostess for the musical performance America Sings. But during one performance she got caught between a rotating wall and was crushed to death. It's so sad that these happened at the happiest place on earth. Moving on at number two, we have Six Flags. So there are Six Flags all over the states, and it's not just one park in particular that's dangerous. No, all of them are. Let's start with the fire in 1984. So in Six Flags, New Jersey, eight people died inside of the haunted castle attraction after a fire broke out. Apparently, they were so badly burnt that they had to be identified by dental records. Then in 2008, a 17 year old boy was decapitated by a ride while trying to get his lost hat. Then in 2007, on the Superman Tower of Power in Six Flags, Kentucky, a cable snapped and wrapped around a girl's neck and legs. She managed to get the cord off her neck but the ride began to descend and it sliced both of her legs off. Surgeons were only able to retach her right foot. And in our number one spot, we have Action Park. Located in Vernon, New Jersey, Action Park has been given a number of different names over the years, like Class Action Park, or Traction Park, or Accident Park. In fact, it holds the title of the most dangerous amusement park in the world. I don't even know where to begin. So for starters, this park opened in 1978 and had mainly water based attractions. One major problem that they had was that their rides were not thoroughly tested. So elaborate rides were built, but the designers didn't really know if they were safe to use. For example, one of the rides, the Cannonball Loop, got tested with the dummy doll, and it came back with no head. But this didn't stop an employee from testing out the ride. Thankfully, he just ended up with a bloody nose and a bunch of bruises. Could have been worse. But the ride was open to the public anyway. Then we have the fact that most of the park employees were underage and undertrained. A number of rides were very unsafe, yet still in operation. Here are just some of the deaths that occurred at the park. A man was electrocuted while on a ride known as the Kayak Experience. One man had a heart attack when going off the Tarzan swing into the water, and three people drowned in the tide pool. Apparently, the waters in the tide pool were so strong that it was hard for even strong swimmers to stay afloat. As a result, the lifeguards rescued, on average, 30 people a day. This park was 
actually deadly, but managed to stay open until 1996, when it finally closed because the amount of injury lawsuits was just getting out of hand. Honestly, how many people never want to go to an amusement park ever again? Mm -hmm.